and I hope that I can share something with you today that will help you and give you some ideas. Now, let me show you the stamp sets. Well, I'll show you the card first. That is really growing on me. I actually came up with this whole design myself. And um, I don't know, the more I look at it, the more I'm falling in love with it. And I have found my little block that says, count our blessings, count your blessings. And that's definitely the time of year. And there's always a good time for that. I'm using two different stamp sets today. Apple Blossom is the stamp set and dies that I'm using to make this card. It comes with a single apple, an apple with one cut. You've got your apple blossoms and you have a bunch of apples. And that's the, the one I'm going to do today. The dies that come with this are really awesome. Let me see if I have here. I do. Okay. When you stamp and use the dies, you'll get this cut out. If you do just the single apple, you'll get this one. If you do the three bunch together like I'm going to be doing today, you're using turn it. Sometimes you just have to keep turning until you find the one that works. There we go. Nope. There. Okay, there we go. And it's got all these darling little leaves, flowers, flowers you can stamp and cut out. And then look at this cool design here. I'm going to show you how to make that. It also has a little uh, name, a tag plate that you could uh, put your sentiment on. And it has, I'm putting these back on here so I don't lose them. Okay, it has, let me see, nothing on the back. I don't know if, if you can see this, but it's got little punch outs right here that you can use your take your pick tool if they don't come out automatically. And look how cute that would be on your card. And I left a little space here so that you could put uh, a flower or some embellishments. Okay, let me put these over here. Now, the sentiments did not do it for me on this set. I was looking for something. The greatest gift is a good friend. Hope you're feeling better. Thanks for your kindness. Well, as you can see here, I embellished, I'm sorry, I embossed this with Versamark gold powder and the stamp and the lettering is so small it's hard to read so I went looking for something else I was looking for a get well but I found one that I liked even better and it's from the country boutique which is one that is in there for Valentine's but again you could use it for a lot of different things and I chose the sentiment I love that we are friends. So that came out of Country Boutique. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> not boutique. Okay, so let's get started. I have my host code here should you decide to order. I know that it's not November, and you know that it's not November, but we had an upgrade with our uh, ordering system for the demonstrators, 
and I had to close out my October one, so I'm just adding a little bit longer for my November one. You can find this at Stampin' at TheBirdNest.com where you can do your shopping. You can go and look at my gallery and see the cards that I've done in the past. And there's a lot of information there. But let's look again at the card. I took the Lemon Lolly, which is one of our new core colors, and I hadn't used this one very much. So I decided I wanted to use that, and that's a nice soft yellow. Then I have my guard, um, Granny Apple Green cardstock, and then I have Thelum on top of that. My cutout with the colored apples. I've added some bling, which turns out to be butterflies today. And then my greeting with a little flower. Okay, the the card stock is cut in half. This is hamburger style, and I have uh, it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and I fold it back so that the mountain is on the inside. You have a mountain and you have a valley when you score. So the valley's on the outside. And I see one thing that I did not do yet. So we may do something a little bit different. Okay, oops. Okay, I forgot to go ahead and cut the um, edge off of this like I did in the card. So we're going to do something a little bit different using that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take, now what I did, I have, we have some um, paper in the catalog that is sticky so that small things such as this, you can put uh, your adhesive behind it and then stick it on your card. Because those are really hard to use the liquid glue or any of it with. So what I did was I peeled this back, put whatever I wanted in the middle, which in this case is gold foil, and then I placed this little scallop die. I, I did it like this and it cut off this little piece. So because I did not cut this and I was going to do a card like this anyway, I'm going to adhere, I'm going to trim this just a little bit with my paper trimmer. This is called switching to plan B, which I often have to do anyway. The, I'm going to cut this, I'm going to place it on a line, and let's see how that's going to go. And you know what, sometimes when you've got small pieces like this, and you can't hold it, when see how it moves when I, I want to put it down? So I'm just going to take a, a piece of tape that Scotch has a removable tape, and let me scoot it over just a little bit more because I really just want to get the scalp. Okay, let's see. I didn't get that quite straight, so we'll see. But see how the, the tape holds that down and I can shut it? 
and then I'm going to cut it. Huh, and I did a great job, yay! Okay, so this is just a little piece to give a little pizzazz to your card. And because it has a straight edge, you can just, we're having an overcast day. Okay, you can just figure out where you want to put it and glue it down. So you peel the back off. Start down here. And I'm going to put it right along the edge of the card. Just a little bit farther. There we go. And then you can take your paper trimmer, cut off those little edges there, the little ends. Let's see if you can see it this way. There we go. All right. And I'm just going to line my um, paper cardstock with the gutter right here. That's where your cutter will go. Whack that off. And then I can flip it over and do it from this side. Again, I'm lining it up with the gutter. And it just cuts that right off. So I'm going to put this back where it goes. Okay, so now we have the front of our card done. And I wanted to show you that the, I, I originally cut the gold to be one inch by the, um, the sticky paper. This is some old amusing up. We've got um, paper in the, the catalog. And um, it is, I believe it is 10 sheets that are 6 by 12. So I just cut off a 6 inch piece that was 1 inch wide. And then I stuck the whole piece under here get this off. Okay, I just pulled it back and put my piece of gold inside, oops, like so. And then you have that. And then you can go and color, actually you want to cut, not color, uh, cut your use your little die and cut the decorative piece out. And like you saw in the, um, the book, when you go to cut it, it's going to look like this. You're going to get a scalloped edge just like I'm using here. And then you're going to get this little teeny tiny edge that I used after I had used it on my card. Okay. Now, the, actually the vellum and the granny apple green are cut the same. They started out at four and a half length and three and a half in width. And I cut an inch off. Just saves a little bit of a step. Same thing for the vellum. Then you're going to need a piece of three by three and a half vanilla card stock, and that's where you're going to stamp your apple blossom or your image. So I obviously have already done that for you. I've stamped it and cut it out. And through the magic of TV, I'm going to go ahead and finish coloring this. I have done some of it for you. And let me show you the blends that I am using. 
I'm using the two two greens that I have that are lemon line twist and I used those for the leaves. The light one was the solid color and then I went back with the dark and accented the leaves a little bit here on the blending on the apple. Then I used Oops, the apple I used in Granny Apple Green. I filled in with light, came back with dark. The stem here is Pecan Pie. I've just got these in. And real red for the dark apple, which we're not going to need. And light and dark. And then the yellow apple was done in the lemon lolly. Like I said, this color is growing on me too. So let's use a little bit of it. I'm going to use the fat tip. Remember that they ha all have a narrow end. And a fat end. And they both, they all come in light and in dark. So I'm going to take my light one and fill in my apple. I don't want to color that on there. And just fill it in. And there's another little apple hidden here, and we're just going to make that one yellow too. Now I'm going to take the thin end, the pointy end of the dark one, and I'm just going to Go around a little bit and do some blending here. A little bit right there. And I also did some blending on the red one where there's some little um, shadowing on each one. So that's where I did the little bit of um, the darker color. Okay, lemon lime twist for the leaves. So I'm going to take the fat end of the light, oops, that's the dark, of the light one. And I'm just going to quickly go over these. Doesn't take but a second to do. A lot of our colors now, uh, stamps now can be colored in the, um, oops, there's one more, with our blends or with our markers. And coloring is supposed to be a huge stress relief. So I'm de-stressing right now. Okay, on the dark, I'm going to use the small end. And I'm just going back over these, kind of going over the veins of the leaf shading where I see that shading can be done and let's see and I think I got them all this time so that's what our apple blossoms are going to look like now let me caution you too that um, the stamp set is called Apple Harvest, and the dies are called Apple Blossoms. This was before Stampin' Up! made the huge change to call the dies the same as the stamp sets, and whoa, does that help. You don't have to go searching through everything. Okay, now let me show you how I did the vellum. Okay, if you have ever worked with vellum, it is wonderful. I love it. But it's not the easiest cardstock to work with. When you go to use any kind of adhesive on vellum, it's going to show through whatever you place it on. So what I did 
I thought about where I wanted to place this and I went ahead and popped it up I'm using up some of my oops my scissors are stuck okay I'm using up the edge of my dimensionals be sure to do that you are saving money and they're not as pretty, but nobody sees them, so there you go, and I'll just do it all the way around. That's enough. Now, I'm going to put about four pieces of the dimensional right there. In fact, I'm going to move this one down towards the middle. So I've got my four dimensionals there. I'm going to peel that off and I'm going to place it <clears throat> on my piece of vellum. I'm going to put the green under it so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to place it right there in the middle. Okay? Now let me show you what I meant. See how well you can definitely see these. But even if you use the clear glue dots or the seal, you'll see it through here. So now that I have this down, I can go ahead and put, let's see, did I use, I think I popped everything up. I popped up that. No, and I used um, seal on this. <clears throat> Because you're not going to see it on the other side, I'm going to go over right where you can't see it. And I'm just going to do, use it a little more liberally so that, okay, if you can see it there, it's shiny. And now, I will stick it on top of here. And now it's adhered, won't come off, and you can't see it. All right, next thing I'm going to do is pop it up right here. And. <clears throat> Now, sometimes <clears throat> you're going to want to put one in the middle when you've got larger pieces, and it just keeps it from sinking down. So I'm going to take those off. And the reason I wanted to use the vellum was because when I first did this, I... Let me get one of my scraps out because <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple more cards like this. Let me show you. I don't know if you noticed it or not, and I didn't uh, point it out. Okay, I used, I was going to do, uh oh, ah! look what I did. Okay, no harm done. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Oh, and I'm forgetting one step. It has a little grid shape, and I'm just going to use it on the top, top and bottom just to give it a little bit of texture there. And I'm going to close this so that it doesn't. I should have done this before I put the um, gold on. But I didn't, so we'll just do it now. Okay, now this is going to go down. And I'm putting it about a little over a quarter inch from the top. And I'm going to close this up. Now, the piece of vellum, oops, the piece of vellum for, <clears throat> for the cinnamon is going to be done the same way. 
Okay, I picked out my sentiment and it's right here. It's one of the photopolymer ones. These are all red rubber. They're clear, but these are the photopolymer. It says, I love that we are friends. So I decided where I wanted to place it. And I want it right in the middle. So I'm kind of eyeballing because I am going to put, you can even turn it over if you want, a glue dot here and a glue dot here so that the words will cover it up. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. I, I'm going to use my finger to pull it off and place it. Vellum can be embossed on, as you've already seen. But you have to be careful with it because it will warp and it'll be a little bit harder to, um, I don't know if that's going to do well, <clears throat> it'll, it'll be a little bit harder to work with. So I wanted to go ahead and put this on here and let's see how well this is going to stamp. It did fine a while ago. So we'll see. Okay, I'm going to need my tools for embossing. I have a little tray. My em embossing buddy, which you put on your paper to uh, get the static off. My gold embossing fluid uh, powder. My brush. And you're going to need tweezers because unless you've got an awfully huge piece of paper because it gets very hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my embossing buddy. And all I'm going to do is tap that over the top. Okay. Next, <clears throat> I'm going to take my Versamark pad. And see how ugly mine has gotten? That does not affect the stamping in any way. I'm not sure how that happened, but anyway. Okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm trying to go right over those little dots of glue. Okay, looks like it did good. But now you see how you can see the, the dots through there? Those little dark spots? So that's what I didn't want showing through. Okay, next you're going to put your paper in your little tray and sprinkle some embossing over it. And it looks like it did just fine. And I have learned that if you want to do an assembly line approach to this, if you're making multiple cards, Stamp, 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 do three, four or five. Stamp, then cover them with embossing powder. Then you can go on and stamp some more color with powder. And when you're done, then you can emboss them all at the same time. Or one right after the other. Okay. We didn't have any um, static on here, which is better than I did it the first time. And the reason I didn't use, I think I showed you this, but I'm going to show you again how it's beautiful. And if you hold it up close, you can read it. But if it's on a card, it just doesn't show up as well when it's a little tiny sentiment like that. Okay, now comes the magic. And you always want to be sure to close up your, put away your, powder or if you're going to be using it again definitely get it out of the way you do not want it it flies around plenty on its own so you want to make sure that you're not going to be having that all over your desk so all right let me get this cleaned up and out of the way 
get my embossing tool, my heat tool, and I'm going to let it warm up just a little bit. Then I'm going to take it and it's going to be just like magic. If you have never embossed, you are missing out on some fun. Look at that. Can you see how it is melting? And I'm going to wave it over just a little bit. And when, when it's shiny, it's all done. If you have a little spot that needs a little more heat, just go back over it for just a bit. And there you have it. Okay, I'm going to pop this up too, so let's do the dimensionals again. And I do think you need one to pop up the center. I'm going to use a bigger one. Just because it kind of looked like in this one that it was dipping just a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to take the backs off. Place it where I want it, and again I'm doing it about a little over a quarter of an inch from the bottom, but centered here, and I left a little space in between. Now isn't that pretty? But we need to add a flower. And I played around, some I liked, some I didn't like. Um, I cut some out of white and colored them, and I had that one on here, and I didn't like the way it looked, so I pulled it off and replaced it. But you can play with these. You can cut them out of your neutral color, or you can cut them out of colored cardstock. And look at the detail on it. Pull that up so you can see it. There you go. And then you can stamp and cut out, which is what I did on the other card. And then I just gave a little bit. On this card, I colored, it was white. And I colored it with the uh, lemon lolly and then just added a little bit of our bubble gum to it. Just to highlight it and make it stand out a little bit better. On this one, it's already yellow, so I just kind of enhanced it just a little bit there. I'm going to take a glue dot and put that down on one end. Okay. And then you know me, you've got to have some bling. And what better to use than our brass butterflies. These are the cutest things. I have a ton of these and I've been using them a lot on my cards. And this is one thing that we were notified that there's an excess oops, it's about to fly away. There's an excess amount of our brush brush butter butterflies in stock. So they're not gonna run out. So grab you a couple so you'll have them to use when you want. Now these are all the little tiny ones. They come in two sizes, the large and the small. So I'm going to take a large off of here. Okay, I'm going to move all of this and I'm going to place him right there. And then I'm trying to use up some on this other sheet. So I put a little one there and a little one up here. And then to even make it shinier and prettier, Wink Estella. Can't go wrong with this. You know, what I did on this card was I only put it on the apples, but I pretty well coated them. And it's 
kind of hard to see. Okay, there it goes. And here. You do have to prime these in the beginning, but do not do what I did a minute ago and hold it over your project because I have had it blop and make a puddle that wasn't what I wanted it to be. It gives a little gold shimmer and so now you have bright, shiny, crisp apples for whoever receives this card. So see, you can use this or you can use the edge. I'm sure there are times when you could use both together. But didn't this turn out to be a darling card? And it really wasn't that hard to do. So um, I do recommend that when you go to cut out your apples, or any image. If it's going to have a lot of coloring on it, or even just a little bit, be sure to use some kind of post-it note tape to hold it down. We're going to pretend like, well here, I can do it right here. Okay, if I was going to cut this out, eh, come on, there we go. And, okay, so pretend this is a whole sheet of paper. Just be sure that you use some sort of removable tape, such as what I just showed you, and do it in a couple of places so that it won't shift. A minute ago when I cut out the flowers, <clears throat> they um one of them shifted and i only got a little piece of what was supposed to be cut out the other thing i didn't remember to show you were the leaves and we're going to put a couple of those right here next to the let's see do we want both of them oh why not and i'm going to use our mini glue dots for that too. Sometimes it's easier to put your cardstock there to pick up your glue dot. Sometimes you need to pick it up and um, roll it in between your fingers like I did for this one. Okay, oh, that's darling. Isn't that cute? Now, one thing I did go back and do I, speaking of glue dots, I <clears throat> went back, just folded this up a little bit because it was flapping, and I'm putting one glue dot underneath the little butterfly there, and on this side, I'm just going to sneak it up under there, and that way, your vellum will be anchored better. Up here it didn't matter because we've got a bigger range and we made sure that we had enough uh, adhesive to hold it. So down here, let's see, we have shifted slightly. Okay, there we go. Now, okay, that is it for today. I hope you'll find that this like I said, this stamp set can be used for many different things. Change the sentiments up. Use it for Thanksgiving. Use it for a birthday card. Um, there's, You know, you're not limited to what is the sentiments are in your uh, stamp set that comes with the stamp. You can go outside the box and pick out anything you want, just like I did with the country bouquet. And I love that we're friends. Okay, speaking of friends, I am so happy that you are here today. Come back and see me next week, and I'll have more tips and techniques to share with you. Remember, if you want to place an order, go to my website, stampinatthebirdnest.com.
that's all for today, folks. So have a great weekend. I'll see you back here next Thursday, if I can get out of the way of my camera. And uh, we'll just have some more fun, okay? And I love you. See you soon. Bye.